Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. As many of you know, there are a bunch of new hair loss treatments on the horizon, most of which I've covered on this channel, which is why I have a future treatment playlist, which I'll link below. But one of the ones that I've never made a video on is a treatment called ABS201. One reason I haven't covered ABS201 before is that I've never seen any research on it published in any peer-reviewed medical journals. But ABS201 was in the news recently. Just about a week ago, an article on ABS was published in the magazine Popular Mechanics. Now, I don't have a subscription to Popular Mechanics, but I do like the magazine because along with Popular Science, it had some great old covers that were good examples of retrofuturism. So, there have been some recent news articles about ABS201 because Apsky, the company that makes the product, has just announced that it will start Phase 1-2A trials for the drug in December of this year. So, that's a potential Christmas gift for us hair loss witchers, but that's only if this treatment actually works. So, What's ABS201 all about? Well, we have to go to the Apsky website to get information on this drug. Here it is. So it looks like Apsky is big into artificial intelligence like a lot of companies these days, but it is a relatively new company having been founded in 2011. Looking at the website, it looks like they have four drugs in the pipeline, and one of them is ABS201. So, we can click on the link and we can get to the ABS201 page. We can see right away that the drug targets the prolactin receptor. If that sounds familiar, it's because this is also the mechanism of a drug I've done several videos on called HMI-115. I'll go ahead and link those videos below. But these drugs both target the prolactin receptor, so we'll have to see what, if any, difference there is between them. If you remember my videos about HMI-115, I was pretty negative about it, and my opinion hasn't changed. The Phase 1 study results for HMI-115 were not that impressive, and also, the drug has to be injected. Interestingly enough, it's not even injected into the scalp. It's injected into the abdomen, so it has to go systemic in order for it to work. Prolactin is often thought of as a female hormone to many people, but it has important functions in men too, so unlike DHT, prolactin is not a trash hormone. This review article that that I'll link below shows that prolactin is involved in the regulation of neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin. It is also involved in insulin secretion. It is also important in male sexuality and reproduction, and low prolactin levels have been associated with depression. So, even though high prolactin levels can definitely cause problems in many people, low prolactin levels can cause problems too. So, if a prolactin receptor inhibitor goes systemic, I think there's going to be a real concern that this will cause systemic side effects. Unfortunately, with only phase one trials so far, there isn't enough data to show that HMI-115 is safe to use. But the biggest problem with HMI-115, and believe me, this drives me crazy because I don't hear anyone else talk about this, but the biggest problem with the drug is going to be the price. HMI-115 is a monoclonal antibody, and I don't think the people who are hyping up this drug realize just how expensive monoclonal antibodies actually are. The average cost of monoclonal antibodies is about 100,000 US dollars per year. So, if you're losing your hair, you can either take finasteride, which costs about 50 or maybe $100 per year, or you can take HMI-115, which costs the equivalent of a brand new Porsche 911 per year. So, even if HMI-115 ever hits the market, which I don't think it will, since so far it has not been shown to be effective enough to justify its outrageous cost, it will be a treatment that is available only to the super rich. And it's going to be especially expensive since health insurance companies are unlikely to cover it since it is a cosmetic treatment. Also, I've noticed that a lot of people who are hyping up HMI-115 are finasteride haters, which is pretty funny. You see, these people won't take finasteride because they're too afraid of the drug, so instead, they're waiting for HMI-115 to save them, and that drug won't even be on the market for several years, if ever, and they won't even be able to afford it anyways, so yeah, good luck with that. But anyways, that's why I've been so pessimistic about HMI-115 thus far, but who knows, maybe ABS-201 has some advantages over HMI-115. First, let me go ahead and review the theory on why inactivating or blocking prolactin receptors might affect hair loss. It's based on animal studies like this one right here. This study showed that in mice, prolactin levels rise with the onset of the catagen phase, when, which marks the end of the angin growth phase of the hair growth cycle. So it looks like prolactin has something to do with the regulation of the hair growth cycle, and the animal data suggests that suppressing prolactin might prolong the angin growth phase. So that's the theory anyways. Now what kind of information do we actually have on ABS201? 
one. Well, from what I can determine from the limited information on the AppSkey website, ABS201 and HMI115 are nearly, if not completely, identical. As you can see on the website, the drug is a monoclonal antibody to the prolactin receptor that inhibits the function of prolactin, so theoretically, it has the effects we talked about, like stimulating and prolonging the antigen growth phase. The site also talks about restoring hair pigmentation. However, this claim is just based on a study of the effect of prolactin on cultured human hair follicles. It mentions that prolactin causes cessation of pigmentation in these cultured hair follicles. However, we don't have any good data that inhibiting prolactin will restore pigmentation in gray hair. So, so far, ABS201 sounds exactly like HMI115. Both are monoclonal prolactin receptor antibodies that are injected subcutaneously every two weeks or so, except ABS201 is not as far along in development as HMI115. The efficacy of ABS201 was tested in a mouse study that is just described on the AppSkey website. ABS201 was compared to 5% topical minoxidil in these mice. ABS201 resulted in better hair growth than minoxidil, as you can see in this picture and in this graph. It looks like from the graph, both doses of ABS201, including 30 mg per kilogram and 60 mg per kilogram, showed the same amount of hair growth. Also, it looks like 5% minoxidil did unusually poorly in the study, maybe worse than the control group even. The summary says, quote, ABS201 increased hair regrowth compared to minoxidil in a short-term hair regrowth model, achieving full hair growth after 22 days, whereas minoxidil only achieved approximately one-third hair growth in the same period, unquote. So, this study seems to confirm the earlier mouse studies that show that a prolactin receptor antibody can advance the onset of the antigen growth phase in mice. However, we don't have any human studies other than the HMI-115 Phase 1 study that was unimpressive, and I talked about those results in a video that I'll link below. So, ABS-201 is behind HMI-115 because the first human study isn't starting until December. So, I don't know what the point of this treatment even is. I mean, I guess Apsky just saw the hype about HMI-115 online and they thought, oh, we should make our own version of this drug and get really rich. There's not a lot of research on ABS-201, but what we know about HMI-115, we can probably apply to ABS-201 since they're virtually the same drug. So, because of that, I have the same reservations about ABS-201 that I do with HMI-115. If either of these drugs actually work, we'll probably find out the results of HMI-115 before we do about HFABS201. But even if they do work, they'll have to work exceptionally well to justify the outrageous cost. I'm also very skeptical because I am worried about the systemic side effects from suppressing prolactin effects because this is a systemic injection we're talking about here, Chooms. I don't see any clear advantage of ABS201 over HMI115 in that respect either since they're both injections every two weeks. So maybe we'll finally get some answers on prolactin receptor monoclonal antibody treatments next year, but I don't really care. Like I said, the only people who are excited about these treatments are finasteride haters who are hoping this treatment will save them from having to use finasteride, which again, is reasonable because none of these people are going to be able to afford it. Also, all these people are so terrified about suppressing their DHT, which doesn't play any role in adulthood, while at the same time, they are not worried in the slightest about suppressing their prolactin levels, which does in fact play several important roles in human physiology. I'm not optimistic in the slightest, Jooms. It looks impressive in mice, but mice are not humans, and unfortunately, it's kind of a joke at this point, but every new hair loss treatment always works on mice, even fatty acids, which I talked about in my last video. Also, there is one thing I need to bring up because I know people are going to ask me about it in the comment section. So, before you ask, the answer is no. Systemic prolactin inhibiting drugs like cabergoline will not work to stop hair loss. There's no evidence that drugs that just lower systemic prolactin levels promotes hair growth. It appears that it is necessary to specifically target the prolactin receptors in the hair follicles for these treatments to actually work. So please, nobody take cabergoline thinking it will stop hair loss. It won't. Also, cabergoline is not just a prolactin inhibitor, it also is a dopamine agonist, and dopamine agonists, including cabergoline, sometimes cause hair loss. So, I really think it is time for people to stop coping with these prolactin receptor antibody drugs. They haven't been clinically proven to be more effective than finasteride, and almost nobody's going to be able to afford it other than a few tech bros and crypto millionaires. Who knows, maybe Brian Johnson will make it part of his routine. <laughs> But for everybody else out there, quit being a pussy and just use the finasteride. All right, chums. I hope you all have a great Halloween this year. I'm going to be hosting a party at my house tomorrow, so I'll be pretty busy, but I will be back with more Prem content very soon. Thank you so much for watching. God bless.